Wall spaces have filled up. So are autos pushing the panic button. Well, some wise ones have moved on to marry their art with furniture and fashionably call it functional art. I am totally for it. I am not against pure sculpture and pure utilitary items. I think both should merge some or the other. Cushions is great fun. I would also like to do a whole uh, sofa if I could, you know, just paint the upholstery. I'd be very happy doing that. Now, other than Brinda's sofa painting ambition, she has actually dabbled in cushions. And one look at them, they seem like canvases stuffed with cotton. And Arzan's lady chair has been an inspiring mix of metal and wood to finally get this beauty. And does it look more like a sculpture or a chair? Well, you decide. Uh, the curves of the existing furniture that were there in the wood uh, that sort of led on to the other curves. You know, they're very gentle. They're, they're flowing from one side to the other. Metal being his speciality, none of Arzan's chairs escaped that uncomfortable, hard look. Notice the rocket edges. Now let's see if this kind of furniture is actually true to its name. Now this piece does seem upright with all the twisted metal. So is it really comfortable? Well, let's see. Well, actually it is. Now this is a painting that you can actually sit on. If you look at it closely, it has three pieces of canvas pasted together to form this chair with the wooden board. If you thought foam was comfortable, well, think again. And if you haven't figured yet, just don't be too overwhelmed by the art aspect alone. But keep comfort as the operative word. Now functional art is a relatively new concept in the Indian art scene and prices already start from about 25,000 and go up to a couple of lakhs. Well, did you ever wonder that with iPods around for our music storage, CDs could soon go out of fashion? But perhaps that would something that would still remain in the market with the price are the glossy CD covers that you see, mainly for the kind of art that they promote. And that's exactly what's happening with LP records. Their covers are now becoming art collectibles. When the first ever record was out, it did more than just awful music to the ears. It was an eye catcher as well. LP covers started as plain logo prints, moved on to graphic art, classic paintings, portraits, modern art and architectural photography. Aruna Bagosh is an art collector of these cardboard pieces and has around 1,800 in his kitty. And do they score over CD covers in any way? The size of the LP is big. You get the most size. That is not available in this uh, CD era. I'm going to have a personal LP record cover collection and for that I'm here at the new Gramophone house in Chani Chowk and I'm going to meet Sharon to get some expert advice. Alright Sharon, let's see what you've selected from this treasure that we have here. You know, what there was, what I found was this one which was a more a western classical one, just the lines and the music notes. This is oh, lovely. This is the photograph and the drawing and the black and white and it has all these images. Okay, tell me from the Indian, uh, what have you collected from the Indian? Yeah, there was one very nice one, her shore, eh? The way that she did it, this was obviously a painting mm -hmm. and with her dancing away with the photograph. Um, but now Sharon, uh, right now we're getting these covers 
for free, just the price of the record. So once this really catches, picks up in the market, I think it'll be like great. I mean, it'll be like how the movie posters in. We bought movie posters for two rupees, and now we see them at ten and fifteen lakhs for yeah. some of the posters. I think it'll be like that. I mean, this is like fabulous, and this is really the time. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> so see you soon. Okay. okay so bye. Bye. Take care. Well, with that help, I'm all set to get these pricey pieces of art framed for my drawing room. Well, these are the selected few that I got framed for my drawing room. This one is for the special double layer treatment of the surface. This one for being the rare Stravinsky portrait that it is. And finally, this one for the story that goes behind it. Now, each time record company Fontana sold an LP record, it gave a separate printed copy of the painting that featured on the cover. So it's interesting how a promoter of art has now become an art collectible in itself. Well, nevertheless, I'm all set to hang these up on my walls. For Easter blinds offer you not only a range of textures but density as well. Take share or go for the opaque kind to block all light. And the range of colors will leave you salivating. They even come with a special anti-static paint that keeps dust at bay. Hunter Douglas brings you blinds where you can play with colors. Check out Vertiglide. With a dual color set, all you need to do is glide one over the other and change the entire look of your room. Why would I put my blind fade in these blinds? That's because each vein in these blinds is laser welded and not stitched. And as a result, you get a flawless finish and fall that lasts for years. And just in case you're wondering how that happens, with my magical wand, the remote. This one is a smart new adaptation of the traditional Roman blind called vignette. Instead of flat panels, this one adds flaps, which are again laser welded. Top down, bottom up. It's as functional as its name. Need I say more? This one's called Luminate launched freshly in the market just about a month ago. And I think its appeal lies in the curtain look. Soft fabric veins attached to sheer facings will Good design is all about the interplay of light and shade. Good design is also about recognizing an element in a space and accentuating it. But what happens when this design element also happens to be the source of light? A very bright idea. I think I've been quite selective as far as my lighting because it's very important. It's a very important element of design for me. The major lighting I've used over my dining table, in the lobby, my bedroom and my TV room are all from Floss Vis-a-Vis. -vis. Looking at the way our house is designed, it's very contemporary. Malhotra settled for Floss, an Italian brand which is sometimes called the Rolls Royce for home lighting. It's when you see their pieces in her drawing room, in her dining room and her bedroom that you get a sense of what floss lighting can do to an otherwise well-designed space. Obviously, style doesn't really come cheap. You can spend anywhere from 15,000 to 10 lakh rupees. And there's plenty of others to choose from in high-end lighting. Based on my short experience, I think uh, our brand awareness is pretty good. And also the awareness of other important uh, brand name, worldwide brand name, uh, I think pretty good. I think competition is uh, something that I do consider more than welcome. Don't like the floss look? Well, you can also take a look at Louis Paulsen lighting from Denmark. This personally signed lamp by late Paul Henningsen is actually a rare masterpiece that costs 6 lakh rupees. Layered 72 times in copper with a 500 watt bulb at its center, giving a soft warm glow. 
but try spotting the bulb if you can. Good lighting is all about quality of light, not quantity of light. It's all about glare, it's about color angles, it's about comfort level that a person needs to get in when he's moving in, out of the house or coming in the house. These lights provide you no glare. This early 20th century lamp by late Arne Jacobson is still a classic contemporary design. Talk of being ahead of time. Well, since most of these pieces and home lighting treatments is for the elite, let's check out what the market offers to the middle class in home lighting. The current favorite happens to be crystal. Chandeliers are back. Most have either Swarovski crystals or special pieces imported from Egypt or the Czech Republic. Held together with brass wire and with a 24 karat gold finish. Starting prices can be as low as a couple of thousand rupees. Places like Kapoor Lamp House have been catering to middle class days for decades. Earlier it was like the designer lights were, you know, meant for a specific class of people. But now with increasing awareness among the customers, now it's not just limited to the upper end. It starts from the middle and it goes up to the upper end. Next time you see a breathtakingly designed light, don't wait for inspiration to light up. Just go ahead and grab it. You can convince your accountant later. Towards the big buy. It's a subtle bait that lies in the interiors of the stores. It can be a bookshop with a cozy corner inviting you to read a while. Or a furnishing store enticing you with a pile of cushions when your feet are aching. Circulation is one of the very, very important parts to design a store because uh, it is a public place. So it's very, very important that uh, the circulation should, take, uh, should be very well taken care of. And uh, secondly, the store should breathe. That's very important. At the end of the day, the aesthetics also matter. Via Home, a high-end retail outlet, is a great example of shop designing. The L shape has been given an illusion of space and the concrete roof left bare to steer away from the element of artificial designing. With artifacts from Southeast Asia and Northeast India, the idea is to maintain the earthy feel. The entire palette of materials is just two or three materials which are left to show the natural quality. So, for instance, the floor, the wall, you know, uh, the wall on the other side, the wall at the back, they're all cement. Mehavi Bajaj showroom stands as a good example of functionality and space management. With shelves such as these, which are barely there around the corner, with sleek trial mirrors that hardly seem to be around, and sliding wardrobes that conveniently blend into the background. Try cutting ice with this floor of glass and steel, specially designed to complement the modern, minimalist look. This floor is smartly interspersed with leather frames and generous seating for you to try out those tuxedos at leisure. The main aim, plenty on display with an uncluttered look, less of stacking and smart storage. We rose lotus to this body for us. They had to sort of make sure that the store reflects my, my, my ethos, my, my values, my look. Lotus Design is a threesome who have been in the business of store designing for quite a while now. Their latest challenge is food. Looking for a place to eat remains one of the most exhilarating experiences for most and that's where the restaurant interiors comes in play. Village Bistro is their latest guinea pig and the results are evident. The very village you know, like experience, it's actually an extension of the old mohalla which existed in terms of you know, giving uh, the, uh, you know, the experience. We have like uh, redone the wall, we have actually created a story in terms of miniature painting which, which is like a walk of Delhi. So next time when your buy looks a little better in the store than at home, it's time to give interior designers some credit.
in Amling is a very old art in India. But it's always been used only with traditional uh, designs and used more as jewelry or as an emotive object. But uh, here, they are being used as pieces for the world. And I think very successful. So, it is time for your walls to sport some enamelware. These frames and panels promise low maintenance and a sheen that lasts forever. It's instant gratification and it's the luminosity. It's permanent. You make a small piece of enamel and it will last you for thousands of years. Designed to remain timeless, there are various facets to enamel art. It's a whole new world, much different from canvases and plain paint. And by just looking at it, it's difficult to tell how many times a single piece is treated for a final product. We do not just sell these pieces but also hold regular workshops to teach the art to novices like me. And to be honest, I started off by thinking, would I enjoy this? Well anyway, with a small piece of copper, some cutting and twisting, dusting glass powder, scratching some design over it, and it was time to place my work of art into the clin. You think it's time now? Yes sir, it's been there for almost 40 seconds. And I think oh it's boy, ready or else it's just burnt? Absolutely. Okay, I need some help here. Fines are very short. Alright, so it doesn't even take consume time, it's not time consuming at all. No, you have to do it many times, but it's not time consuming. And this is six firings. That's right. Six, six firings. firings. Okay, and then a final product. I could just you can make this, and you can use it for many other things. It depends on where you want to put it. All right, incredible. So you say I'm an artist? Absolutely. Did yeah, you know it? I, I didn't know, not at all. Know. Well, there I am. All you need is a raw copper plate, some ground powder, and voila, you're an artist waiting to be discovered. And the sight of these pretty boxes, notepads and display tray surely had me hooked as an aspiring enamel artist. How about you? If you are about to redo your house, consider this. The colors you choose might affect your moods more than you know. If pretty pink felt like a Barbie doll house, well, it's there for more than just a pretty purpose. Pink is known to have a tranquilizing and calming effect. And orange can be highly stimulating. And if you are the vivacious and energetic sort, it's time to see red. Talking about color theme for home interiors, Krishna Mehta is the right person to catch, and I was lucky enough to get him in action. So let's ask him what's he doing for this season. Krishna, uh, what exactly are you doing with this space that we have here? Um, well, I've been doing a deco makeover ah, okay. for L, and uh, what we're doing here okay. is we're going to take a simple setting, like any normal household setting, and uh, do it up for Diwali, uh, which is just coming up. And since it's the season for warm colors and warm. By throwing in some browns and tones of the red family, Krishna transforms a neutral place into one stimulating spot. Color therapy is based on chakras, you know, starts the top goes. There are all kinds of uh, aspects to that, but uh, most people know what colors they like, and if they don't know, I suggest they go to a color therapist who to help them with color because your red has some connotations, yellows, blues. Uh, for instance, orange helps you with digestion, and do you know that? And the trick lies in not changing the colour of your walls or furniture, but more in accessorising with rugs, runners and cushions. A cool colour theme is much in vogue nowadays. Krishna shows how it works by just dicing in some blues and greens. Well, I think most youngsters want to live a casual, cool, sophisticated life simultaneously. And I think warm colors kind of remind them of their parents and their own homes. So when they venture out on their own, 
they love colors with a brighter pressure, more exciting. Huh? So be ready with that palette to get your right mix of colors. It moves, glides and stretches and it is designed to make your hard day at office a little easier. Ergonomics and good looks are now built into your office furniture. Take this table for instance. It's called Elevate and for good reason. Each time you get tired of sitting, just loosen a screw and it realigns the height for your back muscles to get a breather. And with built-in power connections, it is designed to ensure that your workspace is never cluttered with unruly wires. Now for those of you who spend most of their working hours outside in the field and just a few hours in office to file their day's work, what should really be your style is a tiny independent workstation called the Caddy. And this is what a Caddy looks like. This completely personal set gives all the privacy you'll ever need with ample drawers and storage space and enough place to spread your files. And once you're done, down the shutter, turn the lock and conveniently tuck it away at any corner. Now sample this. What if you run an office but can't offer a separate meeting room? Well, no sweat. With an option to pull out the lower desk, the space soon looks like a conference hall. And work continues. If you're an executive wanting that touch of style in your workspace, maybe this is what you can sink into. This particular piece caught my attention from the executive set because it not only provides ample storage at the bottom, but each time you need some leg space to work more comfortably, you could easily pull out the top and work on your laptop. And this smart panel at the back of the table hides all the ugly wiring. So, if you are in the market for a swanky facelift for your workspace, companies like BP Ergo will spoil you with choice. level of intensity for me to sit and uh, work or uh, sit and listen to music. It feels like a pure bliss to me. You heard it from the experts. Now try getting one for yourself. The concept is called a soothing spot and it's about creating a getaway spot within your home. It is detached yet connected. Now that's a stylish paradox. Check out Anju Patak's Terrace Canopy. I love rain and I always wanted a place where I could watch rain without getting wet. All the peace in this little spot and away from the madness at home. A soothing spot is your, just your personal place. And for one, you really don't need to bother about visitors getting to know about your dark side, like Alex with his black den. It's one space where you feel a little unsettled. Uh, it takes a little time to settle into that uh, intensity. It's a very contemplative, meditative kind of a uh, space. Right. Now what if I say that I like reading only in broad daylight? Well, I could tamper that eccentric side. A warm and tranquil place like this makes you just be. And that's what it's meant for. It's time now for me to sink deep in my soothing spot. to handicraft, one easy way to accessorize your home. I took a stroll across Dilly Heart to check out handicraft knickknacks that can jazz up your home. But a word of advice. Well, if you've decided to pick something from the craft world, make sure that it has the authentication stamp called Craftmark. 
for this to know that whatever you're picking is indeed handmade. And I had Leila Tayyab ji help me pick stuff off the rack. So here there is very very colorful from UP and is Mirzapur. Huge range of cushion covers all done by tribal gypsy women from Karnataka. This is terracot but it's black uh, clay from Rajasthan. It's a mixture of goat dung. This is actually mixed with goat dung and you can fancy having this in your drawing room. Very traditional Kalamkari telling mythological stories of the Mahabharat. So there you have it. There's a lot to choose from if you choose to get crafty. What do Sakti Berman, Yusuf Arakal and Deepak Tandon have in common? Well, they're all artists for one. But their paintings don't look similar, nor does their style. The answer lies in their technique. Yusuf Arakal gives a photographic effect to his paintings by adapting an old style called the Kerasio effect of painting dots and shadows. Today, he lets out a secret. Very ancient technique, and you can see even in Chinese uh, uh, strokes, you can see that the uh, chiaroscuro effect is kind of an effect. You don't dilute the color. You don't actually, um, you know, light the color. You just use a uh, couple of dots. Splattered ink, washed images come together to give the illusion of a mural. Inspired from an old world style of using and washing Chinese ink on paper, Sakti Berman is only too happy to share it. Here you put dark and then you put light color and you get this effect. That ink, it is, you can't wash it. You see, it is, once it is, it is, it is permanent. Eight years of oil did him good, but wasty paper makes him happier. So, Deepak Tandon is the latest to join the bandwagon of using old techniques for modern art. The possibility of this paper is amazing. And with a little variation in the uh, making of this paper, you can get immense results. Wasli paper is hand-beaten paper made of jute, which was used for ancient scriptures and Mughal miniatures. But for now, Deepak tells me he's working on a surprise. On any given weekend, one would usually find this gentleman, Arun Verma, here at this junkyard, digging out junk from this messy, greasy lot. Not really an ideal way of spending the weekend. What are you doing with all this junk? Why are you checking it out? Oh, I just collect this. For for my for my love of it, for the passion of it. You're collecting junk. Yeah, collecting junk. It's all out of spares. And the mystery stretches on to what is Arun's big mission behind this weekend getaway. Well, Arun surely had his fox on what he was doing with all that junk, but we caught some of it here and a whole lot of it inside. Take a look. Arun Verma is an artist who loves to pick up junk and make it look good. At his shop, Creative Gar in New Delhi, he houses most of his pieces of metal sculpture, all made out of metal scrap. He is currently working on a table lamp. The base uh, is a clutch plate. You have these two people who are sitting here and reading a book. The, these ones are die scrap parts, ball bearings for their heads and uh, scrap metal sheets for their, uh, for their books. Again, these are construction rods which have been used for their arms and uh, for their legs. You can move this entire thing the way you would like to, to set the lighting.
Give him a useless frying pan and he'll weld it with tower handles and give you this. Pieces of an elevator, elevated to a lampshade. Rusted pliers and blunt scissors serving fruits. And don't fret if the bicycle chains have jammed up because what you get here is a chain reaction. Other than Arun's work, this place also offers paintings, ceramic jewelry and rare artifacts put together by other artists. And most of these are actually professionals in other fields, but they follow their art purely for the love of it. Creative Gar is the next best stop for those who understand this passion. Wanna get your teeth into some action? Stop monkeying around and act now, or this opportunity will just fly away into the sunset. It's time to see the light. If you want any of these photographs, set your eye on the kill. Don't make the mistake to be left out and keep the preening in public for a later engagement. The photographers now are not just happy clicking, but also happy selling in a market that is on the verge of a massive boom. The ability to, you know, sell so many photographs in few days and for the first time in India is a big thing. High time that India recognized photography as a collector's art medium. And here is the catch. The sooner you buy them, the smarter you are. Once the trend of buying photographs catches up like wildfire, your investment in these masterpieces shoots up. Grab the moment. Join the race. This is certainly no flash in the pan. Paintings on the wall. But how about paintings pressed in pages? After the exhibition, all that remains is the catalogue. The works will go all over the place. So, from that point of view, a catalogue is an important document. Art catalogues. The glossy and slickly produced books that you see in most art openings. Over the years, they have grown from a two-page uninspiring leaflet to a piece of art in itself, something that you would kill to own. One should not see a catalogue really as a catalogue. We never did. We saw it as a reference book that would be used by schools, colleges, collectors, museums around the world for as long as possible. And the best part is that you get them for free, at least till the exhibition lasts. After the exhibition, uh, we do charge for a catalog. Primarily, we do a token charge. Virendra Kumar of the Kumar Art Gallery is a tough man to catch these days. He is busy working on the 50th anniversary catalog of his gallery. The process is not as glamorous as the final product, but one that requires his heart and soul. Minute details, footnotes, checking, rechecking and referring back to old records. All for a document that ends up as a beautiful coffee table book that you could show off in your drawing room. It's a taxing, rigorous and exhausting process and people are finally realizing its worth. Whether that will convert into market values, I'm sure they will. It may take a longer time. But yes, signed catalogs by artists will have uh, will have a substantial value. Well, reading an art catalog is like having a whole world of art at your disposal. And if you, along with me, believe that having an art catalog collection is a growing investment, do start right away. I seem to have started with mine.
I mean, I'm saying class is one very traditional option, but I would buy these vases to put on their own itself, you know, uh, just for the play of light against the glass to see the form. Mm -hmm. Moon River has been selling vases for the last two years, and the demand just seems to be going higher and higher. You can opt for an LSA glass vase from Poland that could mystify a corner with a simple play of light and shadows. Or if you want something less brittle, go for a metallic number with crooked lines and smooth surfaces. Now there's an option to play with reflections. It's all about having a minimalist light look that does not clutter up your interiors. And the prices start just from a thousand all the way up to 82,000 rupees for this Murano piece from Italy. It's time to put that vase on a pedestal. Me and Gotham, we are starting a floor as a house of lifestyle products. And uh, we started with vases. Gotham Sate and Prateek Jain have been designing some funky stuff for their newly established brand Clove. The idea is to be chic with attitude. You will find their vases are predominantly in glass but with a twist, with straight and non-fussy lines. I mean it's been there internationally, yes, I mean we have a lot of designers doing it but for the first time I am seeing designer vases in India, I mean I would consider this complete designer. You know, and I think it's a very good idea. Trends keep changing and now vases are there in a big way. People look for nice things, you know, which are modern, minimalistic, contemporary stuff which goes uh, with their decor. Alchemy is yet another place where you can pick up some truly stunning vases. You could call this one a one-stop shop for ceramics. And if you thought twisted and distorted was ugly, well, think again. And if you feel that you've seen enough, well, there's still more in store. For those of you who can't leave behind their passion for the ornate, well, fret not. The people at Queen 10 believe in contrast, especially when it comes to taking on the competition. For instance, the tall onyx vases from Pakistan can easily replace a dull corner table. And there are ceramics too from China if you want to go for the Far Eastern look. And if Malaysian art is your thing, make sure you pick up a poly raisin vase, a special medium. With some smart lighting, they seem to give a glow from within. It's all because of the raisin that they're made of. So if you're romantic and he isn't getting you flowers anymore, push him for a designer vase instead.